Boys, great to see you. It is always a pleasure, uh, particularly because, of course, this is my generation. Through the barricades, I was going to say, what was it like going back to that original material? Because, uh, that must have brought back some memories. Oh, it's amazing. It brings back all the memories, you know, but mostly good memories. A few dodgy ones, but, um, yeah, really good remember. time. I can't remember. That's all a blur, is it? I think it was, a, it was an interesting time because uh, Lion Vade had happened. British invasion had been successful. So we were, there were a lot of groups that had done really well um, and internationally. And so now we've got to make this new album. And we really had our chops together. You know, we'd been playing a lot. We did a long world tour, 10 months on the parade tour. And, and I think there was a great confidence in the band. But also, you just had to up your game because you had Duran Duran over here, you know, all these different bands that were also competing with you. And I think Through the Barricades was us definitely upping our game. And the tour that went after that album was easily Spandau Ballet in its pomp. What's your favourite gig? I, I asked simply because I, I met Barry Gibb recently and I've had a couple of run-ins with him, all in a good way. And he said Glastonbury, which, which seems extraordinary, was obviously recently, was the best gig he ever played. And when you think of the stages that the Bee Gees uh, took on, what, what about you guys? Uh, for me, I tell you, it was the O2 in Dublin on the first gig back in 2009 yeah. and there was a moment yeah. that all five of us are just standing behind the kabuki curtain before it drops and it's kind of you're revealed to the mm. audience and, and he forgot there was, his trousers there, there was about a minute there was about a minute where we all stood there and I don't think any of us could believe that we're yeah. quite doing it again and it wasn't just about bringing the band back together at that point it was about finding each other as friends again. yeah um, obviously Tony's not here we suddenly fit on the sofa, though, don't we? Yes, I was going to say, there's not even room for me on it. Tony told us two years ago when we were in Hong Kong and we were finishing the, the, the last world tour and uh, that he didn't want to do it anymore. That, um, as far as he was concerned, you know, he wanted to go back into his solo work. Did, did, did you know any idea what fueled the decision at all? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. I, no, think, no, Tony, no, I think Tony likes the autonomy, that's what it is. Would the door be left open if he came back? Um, no, now, now we're looking looking to move on and, and to, as an opportunity, you know, to get someone better, you know, better than me. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the new material then. Tell us what we can look forward to as devoted fans. There's got to be some. Gary, you've never stopped working. I know. I'm, no, actually, funnily enough, I, I, I come from my studio today where I am writing stuff and thinking ahead for the band. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we might be getting into a room together very shortly. Is that an invitation? <laughs>